Good morning class. Today we will discuss z-scores, quartiles, and percentiles. After this presentation, you will know how to solve the z-score, quartiles, and percentiles of the given data set. Let's have this first z-score or standard score. Suppose that a student scored 90 in math and 45 in English, directly comparison of their row scores is impossible since the exam might not be equivalent in terms of number of questions, values of each question, and so on. However, a comparison of relative standards similar to both can be made. It only means that you cannot compare them directly considering that they may, might have different numbers of items, number of st student taking. So we need to do something and that is this z-score or standard score. That is z equals the value minus the mean all over the sd, the standard deviation. In symbol or notation, this is the value or the score minus the mean all over your sd, standard deviation. So we have here a z-score or standard score is a number of standard deviations that a given value x is above or below the mean. Just like an old saying, you cannot compare apples and guavas, but with the use of statistics, it can be done to some extent. This comparison uses the mean and standard deviation and is called z-score. Let's have this as a sample problem. Maria scored 65 in an algebra test that had a mean of 50 and standard deviation of 10. She scored 30 on a history test with a mean of 25 and a standard deviation of 5. Compare her relative position on the two tests. In this case, we cannot directly compare 65 as a score in algebra and 30 in the score of history. We need to convert it first in a standard score or z-score before comparing it. So we understand that this is the formula in finding the z-score. So we will now solve for algebra and history the z-score. So in this case, the z-score algebra, the score is 65. The mean is 50. So we have the mean. And 10 is the standard deviation. While in history, the score is 30 minus the mean all over 5 as the standard deviation. We will have the answer, z-score is 1.5 for your algebra, 1.0 for your history. Now, we can now compare the scores of algebra and history. So you have algebra is 1.5, history is 1.0. Since the z-score in algebra is larger, so as you can see, this is 0.5 and this is only 1.0. The score in your algebra is larger. Her relative position in algebra class is higher than the relative position in the history class. Note, if the z-score is positive, the score is above the mean. So, example, these are positive, so it's above the mean. If the z-score is 0, the score is the same as the mean. If the z-score is negative, the score is below the mean. Again, what if it's positive? it is above the mean. If it's zero, it is the same as the mean. What if it's negative? It is below the mean. Okay, so take note of that. Now let's have the second one, percentiles. Percentile or centile is the value of a variable below which a certain percent of observations fall. Percentiles divide the data set into 100 equal groups. This is the formula for percentile. Percentile equals the number of values below x plus 0.5 all over the total number of values times 100%. Let's have this an example problem. Miss Val gives a 20-point test to 10 students. Find the percentile rank of a student who scored 12. If this is your given score or data set score. The first step is you have to arrange the data 
into ascending order, meaning lowest data to the highest data. Next is you substitute it to the formula. So the percentile is the number of values plus 0 0.5 all over the total number of values times 100%. Thus, the number of values below x. Our x is 12. So this is 12. How many values or numbers that are below with 12? You have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that is the reason why it is 6 here. Plus 0 0.5, it is in our equation, all over 10, the total number of values. So this is 10. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Correct. This is 10 times 100%. Percentile now is 65th. So 12, the rank, the percentile rank of 12 is the six, is 65th. Thus, a student whose score was 12 did better than 65% of the class. So this is percentile. Let's have this another problem. Find the value corresponding to the 25th percentile. So in our previous example, given the score, we need to find the percentile rank. Now in this case, given the percentile rank, we need to identify the score. So it's the reverse. First, you arrange the data. So as you can see, we have already arranged the data, lowest to the highest data. Substitute. Now this is the formula in finding the score. Your C is equal to the total number of values times the percentile all over 100 or in notation N times P over 100. So our total number of values, how many? We have 10. The percentile is 25 and all over 100, this is equal to 2.5. Okay. If C is not a whole number, round it up to the next whole number. Is 2.5 a whole number? No, it's not a whole number because there is a value in its decimal or fractional part. So 0.5 is your decimal or fractional part. Since naashay value, it is not a whole number. So round it up to the next number. So that is 3. So 2.5, you round it up, it becomes 3. So the score in the, two, in the 25th percentile corresponds to 5. Why is it 5? Now, since C equals 3, you will count 1, 2, 3. So in here, 5 is our 25th percentile. Now, question, what if 2.1 na siya? It's still 3. So it's not rounding off, but rounding it up. Okay, now let's have another example. Find the value of the corresponding to the 60th percentile given the data 18, 15, 12, 6, 8, 2, 3, 5, 20, and 10. First, you arrange the data in ascending order. Second, you substitute. So we already know the formula. C is 10 times the percentile which is 60 over 100 and that is 6. In our previous example, it is not a whole number. How about 6? Yes, it is a whole number since the fractional part or the decimal part is 0. So that is 6.0. So 0 sha. So this is an example of a whole number. Now what if it's a whole number? If C is a whole number, Use the value halfway between C and C plus 1. Values when counting up from the lowest. Values. So what does this mean? So C, that is 6. C plus 1, that is 7. So the 6th and the 7th. So between. So you're going to find the in-between value of the 6th and the 7th. Or simply find the mean or the average. What is our sixth value? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So it's 10. Our seventh value is 12. So you're going to get halfway. So 10 plus 12 divided by 2, which is 11. So 11 corresponds to the 60th 
percentile, anyone scoring 11 would have done better than 60% of the class. We are done with the Z-score or standard score and of course the percentile. Now our last topic is this quartiles. So quartiles of a set values are the points that divided the data set into four equal groups, each representing a fourth of the population being sampled. So exa example that this line is your data, as you can see it is divided into four equal groups. And then you have Q1, Q2, and Q3. So this is the 25th, 50th, and 75th. So let's have this problem. Find Q1, Q2, Q3 for the data set 12, 15, 11, 11, 13, 15, 20, and 19. So first is you arrange the data, same thing, atong dibuat pag last. So you arrange the data in ascending order. Find the median. So to find the median is, you have to locate first the middle data. As you can see, we have two middle datas here. And then you divide it by two, so 14. Our Q2 now is 14. Next, find the median of the data less than 14. So since 14 is our Q2, we will identify the data that is less than 14 so we have four data so you have 11 11 12 and 13. find the median so to solve the median we have 11 and 12 that is our two middle data and thus we need to divide it by two so 11.5 is our q1 next is find the median of the data values above 14 so we're done with below 14 or less than 14 Let's have greater than 14 or above 14. So what are the data that are above 14? 15, 15, 19, and 20. So find the median. So we have 15 and 19. You divide that by 2. So you will have 17 is our Q3. So we're done with Q2, Q1, and Q3. So the first step again is to arrange. Second step, find Q2. And this Q2 is your basis for finding the data that is less than and that is for q1 and same q2 data that are above or the median above q2 and that is q3 so our answer here for q2 14 q1 11.5 q3 17. let's have the summary summary measure of position we have the z-score percentiles and quartiles for the z-score, this is our formula. The z-score is just score minus the mean all over the standard deviation. The percentile is you have the c equals n times p over 100. And the quartile, you have q1, q2, and q3. So first, you have to identify the q2, which is the median of the data set. q1 is the median below q2. q3 is the median above q2. So this is the summary measure of position.